the 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 coming of the Lord in Matthew 24 is 100% all about when he returns at the end feet down on the Mount of Olives. You see, it starts in Matthew 24, 3. You don't, this is why the discourses are different. What shall be the sign of thy coming? Okay. This is when he returns feet down on the Mount of Olives. End of the end of the world. You see, when he comes at the beginning of tribulation, not seen by everybody, it's not the end of the world. The end of the world is at the end. So, and you see it in four places throughout scripture, right? See, look at this. For as lightning cometh out of the east and shineth unto the west, so shall the coming of the Son of Man be. That's the same wording we get, as you guys all know, from Luke chapter 17. When they're asking him again, prophetically, the coming kingdom. And what does he tell them? Verse 24, for as the lightning that lighteth out of one part of heaven and shineth unto the other part of heaven, so shall also the Son of Man be in his day. The day of the Lord, a single day, okay? Lighteth, it's all about what? Bright shining, okay? Bright shining, light flashing, okay? Look, it shineth to shine, give light. So when he's coming as light, as lightning, it's so exciting. So we know this, we've broken it down so many times, all right? We know when he comes and it's gonna be as it was in the days of Noah, it's a literal reference to the typology in the, in the final year that'll be as it was in Noah's flood, that time of about a year. Here we have it right here in 1 Corinthians 15 that we just shared. So there's five of them we directly know are directly related to when he returns feet down. This is about Paul and his coming, okay? Now we come to what? 1 Thessalonians chapter two, chapter three, chapter four, chapter five. <laughs> what are the chances that this is the same context? probably pretty good, right? Well, Mike had shared in, in the live show, he had touched on it. I've shared it on, on the, in the past, but I'm going to bring clarity to this First Thessalonians chapter 4 this time. You're going to see the clarity of it this time. And then you're going to be blown away by what's coming in First Thessalonians 5. So what else do we have? We have the same context in 2 Thessalonians. By the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and by our gathering together unto him, those that were still alive. Okay? 2 Thessalonians 8. Same thing. Okay? And then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth, shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. See? As lightning with the brightness as light. How about 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 9? Listen to this. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan, with all power, signs, and lying wonders. Who is coming after Satan? Of course, Christ is, right? We all know this even in the, in the chapters to years. The Lord is there on Mount Zion. They've rebuilt the city and the streets and the temple during the first three and a half years of trumpets. Satan is cast out. The pit is open. The Antichrist, the false prophet, and Satan are there and people, and he gets to rule and reign for two and a half years. This is Satan's time with the Antichrist, the false prophet. This is the Antichrist's time with the false prophet. Antichrist is killed at the end of the sixth year. False prophet isn't. Then only false prophet is here, but I'd say he's probably in hiding or whatever. His power and authority was taken away until Satan is cast down, having lost with his angels. The pit is open. Antichrist comes back. 
there's two, there's two and a half years they get to rule and reign and bring about absolute chaos on the earth until the Lord returns then feet down on the Mount of Olives like lightning, like the brightness, like shining. And when is it going to be? After the period of Satan. 